So I got the X axis going, and this is made primarily with a six by four inch rectangle beam with quarter inch wall. Uh, then I had to pour two part epoxy with a pretty, you know, low viscosity so it would self level. And then I mounted these cold wood steel rails to it, and it's run on a rack and pinion system. In this video, I'll go over some of the points of the construction. One of the first things I had to do was create my own kind of leveling feet to get the um, steel beam as level as possible by hand. So in order to do that I got some C-clamps from Harbor Freight, some cheapo little ones, and then I cut them in half and I welded them onto some steel tubing I had. I think this was one inch steel tubing with a quarter inch bolt as well. Or it might be in an eighth, I don't remember. Also a little trick I picked up is how to make shims out of aluminum beer cans. In this case it's Lone Star Light, beer of Texas. I also picked up this digital level from Harbor Freight along with some uh, bubble levels as well. I used them in conjunction to try to get the beam as level to itself as possible, dialing it in with those homemade leveling feet I made. Once that was all done, I then sanded up the surface. This is to give it a little more bite with the epoxy to adhere to. I then used some foam poster board to make the containing walls. Um, I used caulk to adhere it to the sides and then used some uh, clear packing tape to uh, get it all nice and sealed up. I checked for level again before pouring in the two-part epoxy. I used a two-part epoxy from US Composites. I believe it's their 635. And I used their slow hardener because I thought I was gonna need more time, but it, I think for the other rails I'm gonna use their fast hardener because it'll be harder and you, once you pour it, you really don't need to do anything. So there's no reason to have a long setup time. I let it set up for a day and then uh, started to take apart the retaining walls and you can see here probably poured it a bit thick uh, could have gone with a little bit less oh well I also didn't think to cover it up with maybe saran wrap which is what I should have done I got a couple casualties here that fell in overnight hopefully they don't haunt the machine and as you can see here, next time I think I'm going to put clear packing tape on the inside of the poster board where it comes in contact with the epoxy. It'd probably make cleanup a bit easier. But as it stands now, I had to sand away the excess. You can also see where I used the caulk where the poster board met the flat sides. And there was one leak, but it looked like it wasn't too severe. Just sanded the excess drip away. And I'm assuming since I didn't use the saran wrap to cover it up, I got some weird kind of uh, abnormalities in the finish, but it didn't really affect the levelness, and that's all I really cared about. And you can see from the side where the epoxy met with the uh, poster board, it created a lip that I then had to uh, carve down. And after everything was all cleaned up, I took it inside and started getting things ready for the rails themselves which are made out of uh, two inch by a quarter cold rolled steel. I put the pilot holes every 60 millimeters because in case I want to actually replace these with high wind linear bearing systems or something later I will be able to. I also fabricated a three inch spacer to put between the rails and then some uh, ledged clamps that have a half inch space on them for the sides. That way everything is kind of parallel with each other up and down the beam. And then I spent all night uh, drilling and tapping holes. And you can see here what it looks like when it's all put together. Now to mount the rack system onto the beam, I had to create these simplified versions of uh, CNC router parts aluminum clamps. Now for what I guess you could call the uh, gear manifold uh, power transmission thingy, I uh, created it out of 1x3 uh, aluminum bar stock and then also made a motor mount similar to the one used on the Z stage. It's kind of overkill, but I like the way it looks. And all three of the moving sections of this have uh, these half inch inner diameter bearings. I believe they're called R8ZZs. So you can kind of see in this wooden uh, mock-up how everything works. This is the uh, part that was milled out of the 1x3 bar stock and it has two pieces so they spread apart so uh, there's no slack in the belt and then the motor itself slides in its, uh, its mount to get rid of slack on the other side as well. 
And I also created the spring tensioner so that the whole entire manifold presses up against the rack um, so that the pinion and the rack make contact at all times. And it's made out of just some aluminum angle. And that about sums it up. Um, right now I'm getting everything prepared to do the, the last phase, which is going to be the Y-axis. Um, right now I'm just kind of having fun playing with this though, so I, I gotta get back on it. Alright, till next time.